Oh, and my hero in grammar school. I was in Washington school, which is another unusual thing because it's not like it is today. There was a boy's side and a girl's side. You know, there wasn't any of this intermingling. So the boys went in one way, the girls went in the other. Um, but my hero was the school nurse. She was dressed. That's why I went to St. Peter's Nursing School because of that damn cap she wore. <laughs> um, the cap, the whiteness, the white shoes, the white stockings. And she, to me, her name was Margaret Lehman. She was my God. I would try to be sick just so I could go to the nurse because she just amazed me. So she was, she was really cool. She was cool, dear. Uh, they hunted down on Journeyman Road for rabbits. Uh, I can remember with my Uncle Red, before all this became polluted, we would go and catch crabs out of the river. Try that now and eat them and see what happens to you. Actually, we were the first family in Lower Cerebral to have a, a television. Um, just before my mom died, I remember going to Perth Amboy with them in, in the evening, and we went to this store, but we went up this huge flight of stairs into this little room, and there was a box with this, it was a TV, and I thought, what's the big deal? <laughs> There's nothing on it, what's the big deal? And then after she died, we, we got the first TV, and it was like very, the, the viewing was extremely limited. Milton Berle on Tuesday nights, we would be so excited, we'd sit down in the dining room on the chairs an hour before the show started because there was very, very little else. And then there were cartoons that I recall, and I can't remember, Jolly Times it was called, I think. We walked to school every day. There were no buses. In fact, when I went to high school, which is on Dane Street, um, we then were able to take buses, but we would get school passes and go on regular buses. There were no school, yellow school bus kind of things. And if you could, you walked, you know, and no one thought anything about that. That was a good thing to do, you know? Even in the rain and the snow, it didn't matter. There weren't that many schools then. It's not like it is now. There was, there was Washington, Lincoln, which um, was on Washington Road, Roosevelt, and the high school, that was it. But don't forget, there was less of a population then, you know? I can't even tell you um, how many kids were in my graduating class, but it was probably less than 100. What is it now? Five, six hundred? So, I was a cheerleader. <laughs> that was like one of my ultimate uh, accomplishments. Um, like I said, um, there were a great many good teachers there. Um, and the principal was Margaret Mary Walsh. She scared the crap out of all of us. She was like, she wasn't mean, but she had the persona. Um, Mr. Goodkuski, who was the um, basketball coach, was my history coach. Um, who else? You probably don't know him. Pro, uh, Mr. Nukowski, um, he was the science teacher. His wife was a nurse, which at the time was like, if you know, you were a nurse, you're the ultimate. There were very limited jobs for women. Um, you were either a secretary, a teacher, or a nurse, or a nun. And one nice thing they used to do years ago was uh, for Halloween, they would have, um, if you were artistic, all of the stores uptown uh, would let you paint Halloween themes on their windows which was very exciting if you were artistic, and I wasn't. <laughs> but it was, it was neat to see. It, it, was, it was, again, a kind of a, a close community thing. And then uptown there was um, a five and dime. It was called Block Offs. And again, it was that Diagon and Alley kind of thing, Harry Potter, where you would go in there and they had all kinds of sundries you could buy, you know? And again, it, it, the aura of the, the deep, dark area and that unique smell that all these stores had so it was an adventure to go in there, you know. Well, don't forget, there, there were no other stores. There, there were no malls. So yeah, it was busy because that was, you know, that's where you bought everything you needed. There was nowhere else to go. There, you know, they had no places. Um, and I think one of the bad things about the mall is it destroyed this kind of neighborhood feeling in small towns like this you know, where, where they have local businesses because now it's all like, you know, these huge malls.
and it takes away, I don't know, what would you say? Um, like um, the personal feeling you would have with your neighborhood. Actually, it was mostly um, homes and most people were really upset because it was bringing in foreign type people like from New York and people were upset because they didn't know if what what caliber of people were coming into the neighborhoods so they were very resentful but didn't stop it from happening I mean that was progress I think it's it's a lot of it is maybe it's because I'm a pessimist at heart um, but I think it's the lack of community feeling, that closeness that we used to have. Maybe it's because I was a child and I just looked up to adults as, you know, being adults and everything was safe and, and stable. Years ago, it, it, um, the church um, was the forerunner of control for people, for their morals. You know, there were standards that you had to, that they that the church set that people um, would use. Today, anything goes. You do whatever you want. If it feels good, fine. You know, if it hurts somebody, too bad. And I was a great people watcher. You know, even um, because what happened is we were attached to St. Stan's until my mom died and then my, my dad remarried and, and the woman, the widow he married had was going to OLV and uh, her children were in that school. So then we, you know, we transferred over there. And the one thing I remember is the difference in mentality between the Polish church and the Irish church. It was, in, I mean, it was like a clash of cultures. Everything in the Polish church was extremely depressing and it was very, um, it was just very, very depressing. Everybody was so miserable. Even the priests, they were just, you know, go over to, you go over to OLV, and I thought I died and went to heaven. The priests laugh, they joke with the parishioners. Everybody liked each other. People were ha happy. I mean, it was a total clash. The difference was incredible, just incredible. No, but technically it was supposed to be the Irish church. But there were plenty of there were plenty of Polish people who went there too. One thing I saw once that really upset me as a child, um, the church, the new church OLV was being built, so um, services were held in the um, the hall. Um, now Monsignor Dalton Hall, then whatever it was, and um, confessions were held there. And I, I, you know, went to confession one day and I came out. And I'll, I'll never forget this. Some kids from St. Stan's were going into confession and a lady chased them away. Go to your own church, she said. Which I thought was pretty shitty. I mean, if you're going to go to confession, who cares where you go? It's a good thing to do. You know, that's what you're taught to do. How dare she do that?